What? Not this again. That's right. We're doing this again. But I promise, it's just one more time. Good morning, everybody. I say good morning because by the time you see this, it will be morning. But in reality, right now, it's stupid late. 9.50 at night because we had a long day today. But I digress. So good morning and welcome to this episode. So yes, we're doing this again. It's the ice chest cooler. You may be wondering if we're doing an episode on the ice chest cooler, why do I have all this mess on the tabletop? Well, I'm gonna tell you why I have all this mess on the tabletop. So what we're gonna do today is a little different. Now, so far, all we've done is blow air across ice and use that for cooling effect. There is another way to do this. There is the running water through or cold water through a line, whether it be copper or plastic, you know, whatever it is, you run water through a line and you blow air across that line. Now, I've seen videos where they just took copper tubing and strapped it to a a pedestal fan, but I'm not really a fan of, <laughs> I made a pun. Is that a pun? I don't know. Anyhow, I'm not really a fan of that idea, mostly because it's not terribly efficient. Uh, the reason being between laminar flow within the tubing, meaning you only have a certain amount of surface area of the fluid actually touching the, the tube, as well as there's only a certain amount of surface area across that tube to actually do any cooling. So, I was like, there's much more efficient ways to put water in a tube and then cool air with it. We've been doing it for a long time, so why in the world reinvent the wheel? No, we're gonna go with what we already know works. I went through a couple of ideas. For starters, I was like, I might as well use the fan that I have instead of go buying another fan. There's obviously other fans we could use. I could go on Amazon, do another search for some other 12 volt fans that would cover the surface area. But I already had this one, so we're gonna use this one. Uh, but that doesn't mean you can't use any eight to 10 inch 12 volt fan and do the same thing. Well, for that matter, if you have 110, you can use a 110 fan too, but, uh, you know, whatever, you get the point. You can use any fan that you find to do this. I have here a couple different radiators. Now, two of these radiators I actually pulled out of the dehumidifier, if you remember that. So these are coils out of the dehumidifier that are designed to run refrigerant through the copper tubing and then blow air and it cools it down and heats it up as well. So these work really well, but the fin density, like you can't see through them. Hi, right, John Cena, you can't see me. <laughs> I'm an idiot. Anyhow, so the fin density on these is really high. The fin density creates resistance to airflow. It's more efficient, but it's resistance to airflow. I put these on here and I was like, ah, it's too much restriction. So I can't use these. So those are out. So I said, next best thing. I went to the local auto parts store, Pet Boys to be specific, and I picked up a transmission fluid cooler. It's like 30 bucks. It's not that expensive, and you can see, like, I can see the camera. I don't know if you can see me, but I can see the camera right now. The fin density is a lot lower on this. Now, that means it's less efficient, but honestly, we're not really pushing, we don't need to push efficiency that much anyhow. But this will do the job fantastically. That was another pun. It's fantastically. I'm on a roll. And the advantage, take away bum Thor here, is that it fits the fan very nicely. The other things that I have here are just random pieces and parts. Zip ties, the mounting kit that comes with the transmission oil cooler, and some tubing and fittings and general tubing. All right, let's get to building this thing and see how it turns out. Oh, I forgot to mention the pump, the pump that I had to wait on 
and not do last week's video with. Pretty simple. It's a 12 volt submersible fountain pump. Pretty straightforward. The reason I'm going with 12 volt on everything is because eventually I want to be able to power this all with my solar cell. Um, and that's going to be another video making a solar power pack. But for now, yeah, so I can set the fan up and I can set this up and I can drive it all with the solar panel. We've rusted up a little in there. That's why I said use either a plastic or aluminum grating in there. Now I have to clean that up. So what I've done is I've taken the, I've run the tubing, the supply tubing through our PVC vent. That way I can shut the door, shut the lid on this thing and it'll actually be tight. Okay, so now that the lid is back on, you can see the lid is sitting securely here. We have our supply tubing here. I'm gonna go ahead and leave this at the length that I bought it at. Because at this point, I'm gonna have the coil attached to the fan and the ice chest gonna be separate which may prove inconvenient or may not, we'll see. But to attach the radiator to the tubing, <clears throat> it's pretty simple. You're going to just take the tubing, wiggle it on up in there. Some of the more keen amongst you may be like, oh, you forgot the tubing clamp. I didn't, I did not want to use a hose clamp on this because a hose clamp is overkill. What is actually doing the sealing in this case is a little rib that's on the end of this. We're not dealing with high pressure. We really aren't. I'd be surprised if we get a couple PSI. So what I'm actually doing is taking a zip tie and just putting some tension to it. Trim off the zip tie. Ta-da! Now I'm going to do the same with the return tubing. Now I'm going to take the return tubing and I'm just going to simply Stick it down the hole. That doesn't need to be anything special. All it needs to do is just get the water back in there. Now the question is, how do I mount the radiator to the fan? I am using the handy dandy zip ties to simply strap it to the fan. It works, gives us enough flexibility to position the fan how we want it. Now our radiator is attached to the fan. Now I'd like to make a demonstration of how much airflow we can get through the fan through the coil. It's a pretty decent amount of airflow and it's not excessively noisy. In other words, this will blow and you can still have a conversation. Now our next step is to wire our pump to 12 volts, put some ice water in this thing and take some measurements. So once again, I'm going to use my handy dandy jumper pack as a 12 volt source to power the pump. And it's pretty simple to do that. All we need to do is expose enough of the wire. All right, so we have the wire stripped on that end. Now I happen to have the cigarette lighter connector off of this fan. I took off of this fan so I could wire this straight to the solar panel. So we're gonna go ahead and take the cigarette lighter here and use it as a connector. What we'll have to do is confirm, I could use a multimeter, but my multimeter's all the way in the truck right now. So we will simply confirm rotation. It's either gonna work, not work, or spin backwards. So what we'll do is we'll confirm rotation by seeing if it's actually pumping the water. I'm not gonna turn the switch on. We need to put some water and ice in here. You never wanna start your pumps up dry. That's how you mess up the pumps. So first we need to put some water and some ice in here. Then we can start the pump up and see if it's spinning the right direction. Okay, so for now, I'm just gonna put in a gallon of water and a bucket full of ice because that's what I have. All right, so now we're all set to test this thing out. So the first thing we're gonna do is take the water return line, make sure we can watch it, and turn the pump on to see if it's spinning the correct direction. That's got her all right. So now we have cold ice water running through this here coil, and it's cold. That is nice and cold. All right, let's try this thing out. Oh yeah, I like that. It's already starting to condense up on the coil. Now, 
our biggest delta T, if you remember what a delta T is, if you don't go back a couple videos and watch, I'll explain it. Uh, but our greatest delta T is actually going to be at the lowest fan speed. However, our most airflow is going to be at the highest fan speed. So there's kind of a give and take there. You know, do you want more air or do you want colder air? I am actually going to test this thing out at the... You, no, you know what? We're going to try several speeds. Let's go ahead and test this thing out. So our testing showed pretty decent. We were blowing 58 degrees air, supply air temperature, with a 72 degree return air temperature. So that gives us about 14 degrees of delta T. I think that's pretty good considering all we're doing is pumping ice water through it. Now as we increase the speed, it didn't actually make that big of a difference. It only went up about two degrees when we put it to high speed. I think that warrants just running it on high. I mean, it's only a two degree difference. Either way, I think that proves this works pretty well and I cannot wait to take it to the beach. We fill this thing up with ice and water and then we have our fan here to blow on us. Nice little air conditioning system. And on top of that, it's not quite as noisy. So this concludes our series on ice chest air conditioners. We went from simply blowing air across ice. We tried some dry ice, that was fun. We tried a very, very cheap version of it for 30 bucks. Now we're using the ice chest as simply ice water storage and blowing it through a radiator. Personally, this is my favorite. Uh, so there are ways that you guys can improve on this system, but overall, I'm pretty happy with it. I'm pretty happy with this series overall. I think it was fun. So the next thing that I plan on doing with this is we're going to make the solar panel to drive this whole arrangement. We're going to take, I have a 100 watt panel. I want to build a battery pack that fits into the back of the panel and attaches to the solar charger. That way we have like in one package the whole power supply to drive everything, whether we want to run the, the fan or whether we want to run the pump and then let this thing do the fan. Either way, uh, that's the plan for the next video. Or at least a future video. So thank you very much everybody for sticking through this whole thing. If this is the first time you're watching, feel free to go back and look at the other ice chest air conditioning videos to see if maybe you like those systems a little better. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button. Leave comments, let me know what you think, let me know what could be improved, what you think you would do differently, and maybe we'll try that in the future. So thank you very much for watching, and you guys have a good night. Or, I guess this is morning, so have a good day. Bye-bye. <laughs>